Hello, and thank you for joining this targeted oncology presentation entitled Expanding Options for Relapse Refractory HER2 Positive Metastatic Breast Cancer. In recent years, as treatment of HER2 positive breast cancer has improved and patients live longer, some will experience metastatic progression following treatment with frontline HER2 directed therapies. Today, we're going to talk about the expanding role of recently FDA approved novel options for these patients. I'm Mark Pegram, the Susie Wanwei Hung Chair Professor of Medical Oncology, Associate Director for Clinical Research and Associate Dean for Clinical Research Quality at the Stanford School of Medicine. And joining me today is Dr. Julie Grelo, uh, the Jill Bennett Endowed Professor of Breast Medical Oncology at the University of Washington School of Medicine in Seattle and Clinical Director of Breast Medical Oncology at the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. Julie, welcome. Thanks, Mark. Looking forward to a great discussion today. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, let's begin, shall we? I'd like to begin, Julie, with a, a, a talk about um, um, really uh, what is the likelihood that a patient, let's say, who's finished all of her uh, HER2 targeted neo or adjuvant therapy, or even extended adjuvant therapy in this day and age, uh, what's the likelihood uh, that she will develop a metastatic recurrence? Well, Mark, I think you and I both uh, started our careers before we had her two targeted therapy. So we've seen a major change, a major improvement in the survival of early stage HER2 positive breast cancer over the years. Um, when we added trastuzumab to chemotherapy, we saw a dramatic reduction in recurrences and deaths. In looking at the 10-year the follow-up for overall survival from the combined NSABP a B31 trial with the um, NCCTG 9831 trial, um, at 10 years, about 10% of patients uh, in the trastuzumab arm had died of breast cancer. And so that was a node positive group, as you'll recall, and everybody in that group got chemotherapy with trastuzumab. Now, that's not our standard of care anymore. Um, I mean, it was great that 90% were still alive at 10 years compared to what it would have been without trastuzumab. Um, but now we've got data on the benefit of adding pertuzumab, at least in a node positive population. Uh, the benefit of using response to preoperative chemotherapy to decide what to give postoperatively, uh, such as TDM1 with residual disease. We've got the data from the Exonet trial with um, you know, the neratinib uh, following the completion of trastuzumab. And, and of course, in our small node negative patients, we've got great data from what we call the APT trial, the adjuvant paclitaxel trastuzumab trial, where we saw um, recently reported a seven-year follow-up for node negative, up to three centimeter, HER2 positive breast cancer, where uh, for just giving paclitaxel and trastuzumab alone, we saw a disease-free survival of 93% at seven years, but um, only 1% of the patients in that trial actually had a distant recurrence. So of the approximately 6% who had a recurrence or death, Local regional recurrence and contralateral recurrence accounted for about, you know, 3% of that 6%. Distant recurrence accounted for about 1% of the 6%. And deaths that weren't related to breast cancer accounted for 2%. So we also know that all HER2-positive breast cancer isn't the same. We get different responses for the ER-positive and the ER-negative. We have different regimens and different outcomes uh, in the node positive and the node negative groups as well. Let's talk for a minute about um, first line regimens for HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. Um, what would you consider in 2020 to be the gold standard in terms of first line treatment for metastatic disease? I think that's shifting uh, now that more patients are receiving pertuzumab even TDM1 and aratinib in the early line setting. So I, I think we have to take into account what the patient did receive in the adjuvant setting and what the disease-free survivor interval was from completing that therapy. 
I, I think we've used the Cleopatra regimen with taxane and trastuzumab and pertuzumab as kind of our standard first line regimen. I mean, the, that was a powerful study um, from combined HER2 antibodies with the taxane. But now that more and more patients have received pertuzumab, even TDM1 in the adjuvant setting, I'm not sure that data is quite as applicable. So I think we have to look at what the patients received. I have to look at how long they were disease free. And um, the good news is we've got seven FDA approved agents for treating metastatic breast cancer right now. And what site of metastasis in particular is the most challenging for you, Julie? Well, brain mets, of course, uh, uh, are a devastating relapse. And um, we actually uh, see those frequently because in part, we do a good job of controlling the disease kind of below the neck um, with our antibodies, our big molecules, but um, in an intact blood-brain barrier, they don't necessarily penetrate so well. So um, we do see more brain mets as a site of first recurrence or a site of an eventual recurrence in our HER2 population, um, in part because we're doing such a good job of controlling the disease in the liver, lungs, and other sites that the patients are living longer and more have more time to develop the brain meds, sadly.